Aloha, aloha, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's program on aging. Don't just age, engage. I'm Larry Grimm, your host for the program today. And every two weeks, we look at the issues, but mostly the internal dynamics of aging, the spiritual dimensions, and what happens to us inside ourselves as we seek to have a truly extraordinary, extraordinary elderhood. I'm Larry Grimm, and I'm the question today is, what is, how do aging and spirituality really affect each other? And to have someone, an authority on that, speak with us today, I've invited Father Chris Bridges to come and join me here on screen. Chris? Hi, Larry. It's good Hello, to see Chris. you. Hi, it's good to see you again, Larry. And me to see you. Thank you so much for consenting to be, be with me today in this discussion. You and I have had really a couple of years of looking at this issue. And, um, and for me, it's just a delight to have your companionship in this process of, of discerning what it is that to be aging into those elder years and to be uh, people of spirit mm -hmm. and mind. So uh, Chris has been a pastor, a priest recently, is it priest in residence? Is that what you call? Well, it's a, it, right now it's a, it's a priest in charge at uh, Epiphany Episcopal Church in Kaimu Key. And um, I've been there since uh, the 1st of January, 2020. Yeah, bring up the um, beautiful, beautiful building that they have. Yeah. And uh, I have become kind of entranced and enthralled with the beauty of the building as well as the uh, congregation itself. Mm -hmm. And would encourage you to take some some time to look at the website and get to know the people and to get to know Father Chris <clears throat> through the good video work that's included there. Thank um, you. Thank you, Max. So I want, first of all, um, my friend, for <laughs> people, the viewers, to be able to <clears throat> know a little bit about you. Would you share the, that kind of thumbnail sketch sure, sure. of who you are? Yeah, I, well, I, uh, as I said, uh, I've been there uh, at Epiphany Episcopal Church since uh, January the 1st, 2020. And I uh, was, before I became a priest, I was in the military, uh, in the army, uh, for about 25 years serving in the, in the United States military. And then God was continuing calling me to the ministry, and here I am. Uh, and uh, I went to seminary at the at one of our Episcopal seminaries in uh, Swanee, Tennessee, which was great. It was scary, <laughs> but uh, I got through it and made some wonderful uh, friends and uh, enduring relationships there. And I was just so fortunate, I think, to be um, accepted, called, as we call it in the church to be a part of uh, Epiphany's family as their priest. And um, certainly uh, when I started, <laughs> I hit the ground running, but of course the pandemic pulled the horse out from under me. And so I had to, <laughs> I had to stop, stop a little bit there. So, uh, but it's been challenging, but the people have been so good and, and uh, I've learned a lot going through this. What, what have been some of the um, critical um, effects of the pandemic on community life? Well, it is, it, of course, it has changed community life. I mean, uh, the whole social distancing, the wearing mask, it, it, it's, it's cut the, the closeness uh, uh, of community. It's, it's really kind of separated us. And um, which for a church, the church is built on community. We are designed to be together. Uh, in the early church, they gathered together uh, in homes and yeah. so forth. And so that has been a challenge for us, but we've, we've overcome it through, you know, social media. And it is, it is made us to reach out to one another by phone, by email more, by written letter. Uh -huh. And then also, you know, when we were allowed to come back and worship, uh, our church put in some very good COVID protocols, six feet apart, take your temperature at the door, the whole uh, CDC 
recommendations. And, and uh, so we have been able to, to weather the storm, if you will, uh, as a congregation. So. Uh, and I think that particularly uh, liturgically oriented congregations and, and uh, denominations, such as the, the Episcopal Church, where the Eucharistic experience is at the center. Yes. Um, it, it is particularly devastating not to have that kind of coming together in community. Mm -hmm. uh, companion is an interesting word. At the center of that word, companion is pan, and which is in us, in Spanish at least, is bread. Mm -hmm. And so when we are companions, we are sharing bread together. Yes. And uh, that's so highlighted so beautifully. I mean, that's done so beautifully yeah. and expressed so beautifully in the Eucharistic action of yep. the people as they gather in liturgy. Yeah. So here's this spirit and spirituality and aging. How do you think? Uh, I know you're pretty young still, so... <laughs> You can't speak totally from experience, but from that's your why I have you, Larry. That's why I have you. You you teach me so much. <laughs> How do you see spirituality and aging interacting? Well, it, I can say just through my own uh, observations at Epiphany, we have elders in our congregation, and I would say the majority of our congregation is elders. And um, what I have noticed over the time that I have been here of how much spirituality uh, or their church, their faith uh, is, a central, uh, is a central part of their life. Uh, it's not the total part of their life. It's a, it's a, it's a component of it. And um, it, it's just been interesting to see. I, I was so surprised of, of during the pandemic of you know, people who were told you really shouldn't go to church because of your age. This was before the vaccine, uh, but we were allowed together at certain times, you know, in certain amounts. It was so interesting for me to see these elders show up to church, put their mask on, six, sit six feet apart and fold their hands in prayer and uh, be a part of the liturgy. And it, it just was, you know, wow. Um, hmm. and, you know, when it first started, I didn't think anybody was going to show, yeah, <laughs> show yeah. up. But it was really amazing to me. And even some of my parishioners had family pressure uh, to, you know, mom, dad, uh -uh, no, you shouldn't go to church. You should stay at home where, you know, but it was this draw for them, and they came. And um, so I found that very, very interesting. And um, you use the term, you, you're fond of using the term now uh, that of the, about epiphany, that epiphany is the, your spiritual home. Right. Tell, flesh that out a little bit. What does that mean? Well, for you? You call epiphany your spiritual home. Yeah, well, um, you know, certainly uh, I got th that came to me by seeing the activity of these members. Um, epiphany to them is their spiritual home. Um, this is a place where, uh, you know, they come to say their prayers. Mm -hmm. They come to also share their joys uh, with one another. Uh, they gather around the table as you as you talk, and we break bread together, uh, and we hear the word of God together. And our church has been there since 1915. And I have to tell you that when you go into the place, and you've been there before, uh, the prayers and the worship that has gone on in there for those many years just permeate the walls to me. Uh, and... Um, so it is their spiritual home. I had a gentleman, uh, and I always use it, such a profound impact. Um, one of our elders who's gone on to be with Jesus now. And um, he would always come on Thursday to clean up the leaves around in the parking lot of the church. 
And I went out and I said um, to him, I said, Uncle Harry, why are you out here? We have someone who can take care. You don't necessarily need to be out here. And he looked up to me and he said, I know that, Father Chris, but this is where I come to say my prayers. Lovely. And I got a lot of praying to do. <laughs> so, and, and he, of course, he would also come to church. And one little last thing about Uncle here that just drove it, even when he was sick and going through dialysis, and his family told him, we don't want you. And his wife was uh, uh, particular about that. We don't want you to show up to church. He would stand outside. He would sneak in, actually sneak away from the house and hold his hands out to receive the bread. So that, coupled with the other experiences, said this is, these folks is spiritual home for sure. It's a draw to them. They're drawn there. So, so it, spiritual home is a strong sense of belonging, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, to being, being a part of. Yeah, to, to the physical place and then also to the people that come. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's uh, through the history of our world is that we design, we set it, we set apart places for these types of things mm -hmm. and people go the ancient temples, churches that are all around people go to these places that have been set apart as, as sacred uh, uh, places. You know, I think of the, the, the great cathedrals and little bitty churches in England and across Europe uh, of how sacred those places are. So yeah so, yeah now, now do you sometimes feel somewhat um affronted or challenged or maybe even threatened by people who say oh i don't need religion i don't need a church because i'm a spiritual person um no um I, because i think that you know spirituality is everywhere I mean, you don't, uh, religion or a church is just a vehicle in which spirituality is in, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it says in the Acts of the Apostles, and I, and I went back and I, and, I, and I looked at it, in God, we live and move and have our being. So spirituality is everywhere because God is everywhere. And, you know, if you take that word uh, spirit and, you, you know, and, 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 and you know this, Larry, and take it down, it means breath. You know, it comes from that Hebrew word, uh, mm -hmm. ruach, I believe. And it's the breath. It's the breath of God. And so wherever we go, uh, we are encountering spirit and spirituality. Um, and I just this, say, this is yeah. And I just say from my, pers my perspective that religion is a vehicle in which you can encounter that or become more aware of it in your life. Mm -hmm. Words are so revelatory. And here in Hawaii also is the word ha, which mm -hmm. just as ruach and mm -hmm. just as pneuma, pneuma and just as spirit as we often use, it means mm -hmm. several different things. It means to breathe. It means to uh, have com camaraderie, it means to be one with each other. Mm -hmm. So aloha is truly a, a oneness that comes, as I understand it, from breathing together, from sharing mm -hmm. that spirit, if you will, sharing the, mm -hmm. the one oneness that comes from shared breath. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a question that's come in from one of our uh, viewers. Mm -hmm. As I age, why do achievements in my life become less important than before. But can you respond to that? I think, um, you know, as, as I think, I think those achievements, uh, I think when you age certain, you know, those achievements that we, you strive for when you're younger, you've <clears> achieved <throat> them. You, you've, you've, you know, had a great career. You've raised your children. They're successful. And then when you age, things really start, the real, things start really getting important.
to you, mm. the, the relationship with that child, the relationships mm. with those friends, then become more focused and, and, and more real and more important to you than, oh, well, you know, I made it to the vice president of some company or, you know, or, or, or these achievements that we have. It's kind of it's kind of getting back to the to the base. And that that in elderhood is 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 so rich for all of us to realize that relationships and what is real is most important. Yeah, the achievements are good, but you know, getting to the real thing about living uh, in in elderhood. That that makes sense, Larry. <laughs> Maybe I was rambling. You know, I don't know. Uh, sounds that uh, sounds very good. I like that as a response. Yes, I uh, I know from our um, I'm Presbyterian minister, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Presbyterian church had a seminar this past year, the title of which was "From Role." to soul. Mm -hmm. And I think just as you have said, it, it's a way of saying that there's a shift we go through as we age that uh, as a consciousness, mm -hmm. we begin to ask the question, we ask the questions, what's really important? And if we, and we answer them with our lives focused in relationships primarily, mm -hmm. I like that response from you that you highlighted. Yeah. Yeah, and I see, I see that in my in, in, in my you know elder members. Uh, uh -huh. They're they're focused on what really is important. You know, faith, uh, the relationship with their children and their friends. It's just it, it, it's it's different than when they were uh, uh, in their younger years. Yeah. Well, doesn't the church need to have more young couples with children on their roles? You know, that has been uh, uh, um, something that churches has always grappled with. And, you know, it's always we need young people. We need young people. Well, you know, churches need all people. Um, so, I, I, you know, but I think that that emphasis so much on young people has taken away from there needs to be emphasis on our elders, because our elders bring so much to the table for all of us young folks. Uh, and we just touched on it, what, you know, what is really real. And, uh, you know, uh, elders give us a lot of advice about things. They've been through the ropes before. They've been through the emotions of whatever in relationship. And so elders teach us and we've got to have elders and, um, uh, and and recognize their importance for us, um, you know. And churches, I, I think, in some in some respects, have put too much emphasis on that. Uh, I think we need to be equal with it, you know. Church needs everybody, yeah. but um, and you know, our society, and we've talked about this before, Larry, is our society, you know, just kind of puts elders aside, and I don't think that's right, and I don't <laughs> think that's. Uh, what Jesus would want us to do. There's so. an interesting word in, in the New Testament uh, that gets translated as widows. Mm. But one of the other ways that it, what another thing that it refers to is women who you know, within a congregation or within the church have devoted them, their lives to prayer. Mm -hmm. And so they're highly respected because what do they do? Well, they pray. Yeah. yeah. And um, the power of... <clears throat> of that spiritual task of praying mm -hmm. is recognized in the New Testament mm -hmm. um, in ways that we may not see it just because that word so often detracts it from the, the other meaning by referring to women who have lost their husbands and they may have lost their husbands. Right. But what was important was that they, they were able to devote themselves without distraction to prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I am fascinated by this topic, as you know, right. <clears throat> Uh, I have been aware that we have what I like to say is four stage, four stages of life. In my work um, online with coaching people into their extraordinary elderhood, mm -hmm. I say there's childhood, there is adolescence, there's adulthood, and then there's elderhood. Mm -hmm. And between each stage, there's a transition that we go through. And the transition, if we do it effectively, 
means the next stage of life is going to be so much more right. rewarding and understanding. Mm -hmm. But what the church offers, it seems to me, is that component of companionship. Mm -hmm. uh, congregations are already deeply entwined and enriched with each other's lives. And mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so, so it's just a given that they have community that is important, wh whereas other people have to build that. Yeah, uh, it's 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 already it's already there, and um, you know that's you know back to your question, and I mean, you know, for younger people to be able to plug into that uh, relationships that are already there, and people who uh, support you. Uh, and are there for you in the in the ups and downs of life. Uh, that's very important. We need community, and and that's you know back to the other uh, comment about COVID. I'm very concerned about people you know being isolated in their homes, and you know just uh, that's not good. Uh, we are built, designed by God, if you will, to be in community with one another. And uh, I am just, our prayer every Sunday is that God will end this pandemic in our land and world and that we can all come together as God intended us to be uh, around a table full of food. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now, I understand from, uh, from Generations Magazine that Kaimuki is one of the most densely populated areas on the island densely populated with over 60 mm. uh, residents over 60 over 65 right. what does what is all of this saying to you about the mission of of epiphany church there in kaimuki a beautiful little community well what what it's uh, I, I believe that it, it's calling us to engage with the elders in 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 uh, uh, Kaimuki community as you said it's the second largest elder population here on the island of Oahu it used to be the first oh. and um, so you know we're we're looking at or I'm looking at in ministry as, as ways to engage our elder population. Um, more. Uh, we have extended an invitation to a little group of elders who play the uh, ukulele. Uh, come and use our parish hall and, and, and do that and then be a part of our community. And, um, and then also there is uh, ballroom dancing uh, uh, interest. Uh, and so, you know, it goes back. I, I want elders around me because they have, been, they have walked it. They have talked it. And I want them to be around um, uh, me and uh, other folks in our congregation. So that's where we're kind of moving to. Um, and, um, you know, we just want to be an open place for elders to come and, and, and to participate with us. And, and I suspect, Chris, that you're going to be able to say to them that you're there. We're here to be, we're here to nurture your spirituality. We're here yeah. to... Yeah. Strengthen your spirit in this, your spiritual home. Yeah, and, and, and strengthen that and, you know, be a companion with them as they go through these processes. And also for everybody else, as you've articulated, through childhood, through, mm -hmm. you know, childhood to adulthood and or childhood to adolescence and adolescence to adulthood and adulthood to elderhood. These are these transition moments. And, um, you know, I've had conversation with people who are getting ready to graduate out of college and they don't know what to do. Well, we've all been through that. And what is that? And they're so concerned about that. Um, and, and so, um, you know, it, it, you know, the transition to, to elderhood is another, another uh, way I think the church can reach out and, and support. Yes. And in some ways, every transition is so, seems so critical and seems like almost a death mm. and uh, certainly there is sometimes a dying of my understanding of ourselves right as we used to be but having elders around is a constant reminder that there is life after death exactly 
<laughs> and that if I can do it, you can do it, you know, and, and, share, and, you know, and share those stories of, you know, when I got out of college, this is what, and so that, that helps people that it's almost a role of mentorship, you know, yes. of, and, and we all need mentors and we all yes. need people who understand what we're going through and elders certainly provide that to all the rest of us. Father Chris, I am so grateful for your insights in this. Uh, my work with with online uh, people is uh, gets down in the really gets down in the uh, weeds with them to where they're going with their lives. Some mm -hmm. some of them are critically ill. Some of them have come through terrific transitions of divorce and separation. Yeah. And uh, and I, as a coach and counselor, get down in the in the dirty stuff with them and. We find ways to move forward. But what is so important and necessary for me is to be able to offer some uh, resources yeah. like Epiphany Church to say, mm -hmm. here is a community where your spirituality can be nurtured and strengthened. Mm -hmm. Give it a test. Go, yeah. te go taste it and test it. <laughs> test, yeah. Taste and see, as they say. And uh, Larry, I do appreciate your ministry and your work. Uh, and, and as I said, uh, you're teaching me because I did not think in a, uh, in a million years that that I would be having these type of conversations of dealing with elderhood. And uh, so, as they say, God works in mysterious ways. And and uh, I do appreciate uh, your the, your friendship to me over you're these very, years. You're very, very welcome. And we certainly have been brought together for an, an, uh, a greater purpose than what I'm aware of, I'm sure. Yep. Thank you, Father Chris. Thank you, Larry, so much. The Episcopal Church. There's a star in the east, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's, it shines brightly through Epiphany Church. Yeah. Thank you. Viewers, I hope you'll come back in two weeks. Uh, don't, don't just age, engage as on uh, Think Tech Hawaii every two weeks. I thank you so much, Think Tech Hawaii, for sponsoring this show and for doing the good work in this community, which you do. By the way, if you'll go to Think Tech Hawaii, if you're there on thinktechhawaii.com, slide on over to the donate button and donate a couple of bucks to make sure that we keep community uh, inquiry alive and well. Don't just age, engage. Aloha. Aloha.